Hey everyone, let's make our first interactive UI together using Squareline Studio completely from start to finish and get it to work on our ESP32 S3 round touchscreen module. By the end, you will not only have the skills to create this UI, but you will also be able to approach much more complex designs like this one. And on that note, I actually have a surprise for you at the end of this video that I cannot wait to share, so please do hang around so you can check it out for yourself. Before continuing, please make sure that you have the Arduino IDE version 2 installed on your system, as well as the ESP32 version 2.0.12 boards by Espressive Systems. Make sure you also have Squareline Studio downloaded and installed, and that you've made a free account for personal use. Alright, there's a whole bunch of stuff to get through and I hope you're ready. Let's get into it. Step 1. Set up the Arduino Libraries and Project. Head over to the Waveshare wiki link in the description below and download the demo code zip file. Once extracted, go inside and head over to the Arduino folder. First, we need to make sure that we have the right libraries installed, so go into the Libraries folder and copy these three libraries into your Arduino's default library location. If you're running Windows, this should be under Documents, Arduino and Libraries. And that completes the library's installation. However, there is one file we need to modify a little bit so that you can use larger font sizes with Squareline Studio. So let's go inside the LVGL library folder and then into the source folder right here. You need to look for the file lv underscore conf dot h and open it with your favorite text editor. Scroll down to somewhere near the middle where you see the font usage section. Just set all of these values to 1 to enable all the sizes. Ok, now save over the original file, close out of your text editor, and now we are ready to set up our Arduino project. So head back over to the zip file you extracted and go into the Arduino directory again, but this time go into the examples folder. From here you need to copy the lvgl underscore Arduino folder, and paste it in the directory you want to work from. I recommend you do this in an empty directory. Next, rename this lvgl underscore Arduino directory to something more relevant to your project. Finally, go into this directory and rename the .ino file to match the exact name of this folder. Alright, that is our Arduino project all set up and ready to go. Let's leave it here for a few minutes while we set up our Squareline Studio project next. Step 2. Set up the Squareline Studio project. Here on the Create tab at the top, click on the Arduino tab and then select the Arduino with TFT underscore ESPI option. Now on the right sidebar, you can give your project a name and description, but I'm just going to leave mine as the defaults. For the project directory, click on this folder icon and go to the same directory where your Arduino project is. And here, make a new directory for your Squareline Studio project. I'm going to call mine Squareline underscore output. Go into this directory and choose select folder. Next, you need to put in the settings for your screen. Mine is 240 by 240 pixels and the shape is circular. Also, the color depth is 16 bits, so I need to change that too. I'll also change the theme to dark, which is my personal preference, and I'll leave the other settings as their defaults and click create. Okay, great. Now we just have to set a couple more things, so head over to the file menu and go to project settings. In the properties at the top, select circle for shape again, but more importantly, scroll down to the file export section and set the project export route as the same directory where you set your Squareline Studio project. In my case, this is that same Squareline underscore output folder right here. Okay, and you need to do exactly the same for the UI files export path and click apply changes when you're done. And that's it. We are now ready to actually start making our UI, which is of course the most exciting part, so let's do that next. Step 3. Create and export your UI design. Let's make a really simple volume controller GUI. So grab an arc from the widgets tab on the bottom left and drag it onto the screen. Make sure it's aligned in the X and Y by setting these values to 0 in the inspector panel. 
Let's also bring in a label and set the text to volume. Then let's center it horizontally and scooch it down just a little vertically so that it sits between the ends of the arc. Alright, now let's bring in one more label to display the amount of volume and center it and then make it bigger by enabling the text style right here at the bottom and selecting a larger font size. I'll also set the default text for this label to 50. Now I'd like to control the volume from 0 to 100 using this arc slider and I want to see the volume update in real time in the middle. And to do that we need to add an event. So let's click on the arc object up here in the hierarchy panel Scroll down all the way to the bottom in the inspector panel on the right sidebar and click add event. As the trigger for the event, select value change and under action select set text value from arc and then click add. Now you just need to select the label that will display the changing volume number and in our case that is label 2. Wonderful! Now to see how this would work on a real screen, look for the play button on the top toolbar and activate it. You'll see Squareline Studio go into play mode where you can now interact with this screen and test its behavior. And that's working exactly how I want. Now let's go out of play mode and finish up by first saving our project and then exporting the generated UI files by clicking on export here at the top and export UI files. Alright, and now let's combine our Squareline Studio files with our Arduino project to really bring this thing to life. Step 4. Combine the Squareline and Arduino projects. Head over into the main directory where you have your Arduino and Squareline Studio projects. Then go into the Squareline output folder and copy everything from this directory. Then go up one folder and navigate into the ESP32S3 Squareline UI folder and literally just paste everything right here. And that's it. We can now load up the .ino file, which should fire up inside the Arduino IDE. And now we are ready for the final step. Hang in there everyone, you're doing great and we are almost done. Step 5. Configure and upload your code. Starting at the top where you see the includes over here, add the line include ui.h. This tells the Arduino IDE to bring in the UI we exported from our Squareline Studio project. Next, inside the setup function, scroll all the way down to the bottom and comment out the demo code because we want to use our own UI instead. Then, to actually load up our UI, add the function call UI underscore init at the bottom of the setup function and don't forget the semicolon. Now, you just need to plug your screen into a USB slot on your PC and tell the IDE that we are working with an ESP32 S3 dev module. You also need to make the following changes under the tools menu as shown in the Waveshare wiki page. Congratulations for making it this far because you are finally about to see the results of all of your hard work. So take a deep breath and let's click on the button to upload this. Wow, just have a look at this. How amazing is that? And now you have all the tools you need to explore Squareline Studio further and make even more complex UIs, like this one. It has a volume panel where you can adjust the volume and sound balance, as well as an equalizer panel where you can adjust different frequency bands using these sliders and toggle between mono and stereo mode. And that brings me on to the surprise that I have for you. I am giving this entire project to you absolutely for free so you can download it and upload it to your ESP32 S3 display board right out of the box. The download also includes the entire Squareline Studio project with all the image assets so you can literally change anything you want and really make this project your own. Alright, that is it from me everyone. Thanks so much for watching and as always, do let me know what you think in the comments below. And I'll see you next time.